Cristo del Pacacho stands high over the capital of Tegucigalpa. Watching over the city and the country of Honduras. And so many here, it seems, need watching over. Omar Enamorado in the slums of San Pedro Sula, and he showed us how he tries to get around in his wreck of a wheelchair. On one side, the part he uses to push his wheelchair is missing. On the other side of his wheelchair, the rim is just hanging on. Only one, only one. So I need, I need the two, the two, the two things. Omar can barely navigate down the sandy, muddy, rutted road where he makes his home. They um, say, do you have money for buy wheelchair? No, I don't have money because I'm very poor. I'm very poor. As is so much of Honduras. <laughs> In many ways, Honduras is a forgotten country. There is no civil war, no genocide, no drug running. No headline-grabbing problems, just unemployment around 30 percent. More than half of the people live in poverty, and few can afford basic health care. Two thousand miles away, in a Cleveland, Ohio warehouse, Volunteers are sorting medical equipment and medical supplies that were headed to the landfill. Is it amazing how much surgical instruments? I mean, look at this. I really don't understand. I mean, it is equipment strict U.S. regulations say should only be used once or unused supplies a hospital no longer needs. Cleveland Clinic doctor Lee Ponsky founded MedWish International. Do you have three CCs with needles? Oh, we've got a ton. 20 gauge. 21, 22. Let's see your 20. 22s. Okay, 3 mil by 22 gauge. I'd rather have, I think these look better here. Oh, now this is good suture stuff. I need this. What's the bulk of the stuff you guys are looking for? I think we're just scratching the surface of what's going on here. So I think if we ever that? saw the true amount of supplies that was ultimately thrown away, I think it would be astronomical. So it, it does blow you away. It's very surprising. Unopened surgical instruments. In fact, a Yale study found an estimated $200 million worth of medical materials are discarded unused every year. Since the study is a decade old, that number is likely higher. There you go. Got room for one more? This organization is one of several around the country which takes what hospitals plan to throw away and gets the supplies to countries like Honduras. Okay, mas. Panchito, welcome back. May Cruz <laughs> never stops moving. She never rests. Isopo. Okay, guys. She gets things done. That car doesn't have good tires. Whether it's rounding up volunteers to get them ready for the day's work, <laughs> or giving school children hugs. Ay, que guap. <laughs> May helps run Sociedad Amigos de los Niños. It's a faith-based organization that helps children and unwed mothers with education, housing, and health care. If you're not healthy, you cannot be educated. First, you have to be healthy, and then you can receive an education. And when you get an education? Then it's not going to be a third world country anymore. It's going to be 
uh, self-sufficient people uh, giving back to their country. But May knows an educated, healthy country doesn't come easily. Her organization relies on mission trips and donations from countries like the United States. So May, who doesn't rest, who gets things done, heard about that warehouse in Cleveland, Ohio, the one filled with medical supplies her country desperately needs. It amazes me because I live there in the United States and, and, and just so many things that I took for granted and that I threw away, and everything that I threw away and that the United States threw away, we needed here, everything. It's, you won't believe all the things that are needed here. Since 1993, Medwish International has sent nearly a half a million pounds of medical equipment and supplies to more than 45 countries. Operating gowns, surgical drapes. Surgical drapes, okay. And take them all, okay. Today, volunteers are sorting the supplies that will go to Honduras and the medical brigade Sociedad de los Niños is planning. Let's weigh this. This is some suture material. This is going to be outstanding to bring on the trip with us to Honduras. I was just looking to make sure it works and you can clearly see through it, no problem. The light actually works as well, which uh, this will be very useful. These working otoscopes are being packed for Honduras. So are scissors, gauze, and antibiotic ointment. June 1966, perfectly good surgical instruments that have been sitting in storage for uh, since 1966. They're older than you. They're older than me, that is true. And they will now be put to good use. This is exciting forceps, hemostats, I mean, this is, this will be more instruments than they've ever seen in their okay, lives so down there. It's unbelievable. Dr. Ponsky will also bring supplies that were part of an unused Vietnam-era mass unit. See, it says here, the, from the U.S. Army. Including a few army cots. 300. He knows the cots are needed. But they fold up pretty small. Just how much will surprise even him. <laughs> okay. It is the medical brigade's first day in Honduras. What is the problem? The very young and very old are waiting outside a school that has been turned into a makeshift medical center. On this trip, five doctors from the Cleveland Clinic have followed the Medwish supplies and will put them to use in the most remote parts of the country. Buena Vista is an agricultural town in southeast Honduras. Some people have walked miles for medical care, like this man. I can't see really well with my eye, and sometimes I feel that the wind just goes into my eye, and it's horrible, and this is a great opportunity for me to fix my eye. His wife, my teeth, I have really bad headaches, and I have a urinary infection, and my back hurts. And their five-year-old son, Renikio. He suffers. He's always very, very nervous and cries a lot. And even when he goes to school, um, he's always very nervous. So maybe they have medicine for that. For the next couple of hours, Renikio and his parents will get the kind of health care the United States takes for granted. Dad's eye is examined, and a social worker talks with Renikio. It turns out he's scared to go to school. Talking about it will help. Okay, lo más que puede hacer es hablar, hablar, hablar. A little afraid. His mom has an abscessed tooth, and Dr. Ralph Mondora suspects she's been living with the pain for weeks. Got her numb, and we're going to drain it again and take the tooth out, actually. I'm sorry. In a first world country, her tooth would likely have been saved, but this is the only option in this part of Honduras. <laughs> On this day, 
and more than 300 people wait patiently in line for their turn to see a doctor. We'll take them, Brian. Yeah, yeah, we sure will. No one is turned away. Hola, señora. It's a Motrin. Tres niños te voy a dar a Motrina de contratiempo. Tiene un poco de infección encima. Conrad Simpendorfer is a surgeon in the United States, but today he's a family doctor. She has a rash of some sort, I don't know from what. No, eso no más. ¿Y este quién es? No, ella es que tiene un problema que cuando... The daughter has, uh, you know, normal a cold and, and cough, and she got some, uh, sounds like children's Motrin and amoxicillin. Okay. I am surprised that people can live so far uh, from any kind of uh, medical facility or uh, doctor. Que no tenga parásito. So far from medical care. And the supplies used to treat the sick and injured. Something like uh, these simple items like these scissors in the United States would get thrown out many times because A, they were used once or somebody inadvertently opened a package and they never got used, but the package was opened. And uh, there we, you know, are so casual and just getting rid of uh, an instrument where here it's difficult to come across uh, instruments as simple as a pair of scissors. I see. Uh, I think it's an excellent cause that Medwish has that they're able to find donations and able to find supplies that are uh, so easily accessible in the United States and that we have such a surplus of that we're able to donate these things or, or not even use them in some cases where they're here a, a necessity and they're very useful to be able to bring them down here where they definitely need them. Simple know. economics. Us, it's just like uh, computer technology. A lot of the stuff we use, by the time you use it, there's no one better stuff out there, so a lot of hospitals have an oversupply. I, I would say 80% of the hospitals where we come from in Cleveland probably have stuff they throw away that could be used in countries like this. <laughs> Those working otoscopes that would have been thrown away are now being used to diagnose ear, nose, and throat problems. He has holes in the drum, so he's had chronic ear disease. I have a beautiful view. Pull up harder. That's great. It is a problem this man has suffered with for years. As we get closer to the drum, it becomes more painful. Oh, I know. It hurts. I know. Wow, look at that yeah. big chunk. It's sorry, like sorry, yeah. sorry. Lo siento mucho, señor. No más. No más, no más. Puede sí. oír mejor. Sí. Sí. You can, hear, you can hear better. Yay. Yay. It is a difficult life in Honduras. In La Boca, La Boca. And for many, health care oh. is a luxury. Oh, there. There you go. And now, uh, now, leche. Anna Maria Ferreira and her four children were lucky. Today's medical brigade was a short walk from their home. A home without electricity or running water. Rain provides drinking water and water to wash dishes and clothes. Anna Maria has just enough land just enough chickens to feed her family. <laughs> She's grateful her children don't have serious health problems. But with every cough, with every cold, she worries. The nearest medical clinic is an hour's drive away. Even if she could get a ride, she couldn't afford the care. We live here and we're comfortable, but we're poor, you know, always fighting every day. Fighting every day to give her four children an education and to keep them healthy. If she's successful, 
It will be a hard one fight. Could you translate? She's talking about a sore throat, swollen throat, and asthma. She's saying she also still has the flu. Rule one is always listen to mom. Does she have pain in other joints? She's got varicose veins. Oh, in it, just in this ankle? During these medical brigades, the doctors are learning firsthand how hard life is here. ¿Cómo se llama? Federico. And that sometimes medical treatment must be improvised. God, I wish I had some instruments to could pop this right out. It's just a root, actually. Most of it's gone. It's just one root. I mean, without an x-ray, you're guessing. It, you know, it'd be like a neurosurgeon doing surgery without the uh, CAT scan. That's good. Without a proper basin, Dr. Jeff Ponsky uses a plastic bag filled with liquid soap to help clean 10-year-old Juan Jose's foot. Do I lay a key? No? Yeah, what can I get you, Dad? A donkey stepped on his foot and crushed part of his toe. I'm surprised that he doesn't have a worse infection. There is an infection at the very tip, but it's non-tender. There's no bone exposed. The antibiotic ointment and gauze Dr. Ponsky will use to treat and wrap Juan's foot. Augment is perfect. You have some? And the supplies he's using to treat dozens of other patients. It's an infected wound. She must have cut herself would have gone to waste. So she, did. she has a good pulse in her foot, and there's no problem with blood supply. No mas, no mas, no mas. All of this is from Medwish, everything you see. All this equipment here would have been put into landfills around the United States. And instead of putting it in the landfills, we're putting it to good use. So we'll tell her to elevate this. We'll tell her to wash it every day, twice a day. Keep it clean, and uh, we'll put her on some antibiotics. It's starting to heal. I think the important point is not is not to sit around and wonder, why is this stuff being thrown away? You know, isn't it a shame? But to make good use of it. Como en la mañana, una. Sí, y una en la noche para siete días. Let's take advantage of these opportunities to create good health care possibilities around the world. An opportunity to provide health care and perhaps restore a bit of dignity. 25,000. Sister Maria Rosa Legol is trying to balance the checkbook of her latest project. Okay. A boy's ranch called Flora Azul. Hmm, that's for this month, my goodness. More than 20 boys live and learn together at Flora Azul. Most are here because their parents could no longer care for them. 12-year-old Ronald has been here a couple of weeks. He and his brother share a bed. This is the bed where I sleep with my brother because I don't have a bed. As of today, Ronald and his brother will no longer have to share a bed. Those army cots donated to Medwish are now being put to use. But it won't happen without some negotiation between Ronald and his 14-year-old brother, Marlon. I thought the cut was mine. Now he says it's his. I want the cut. After some give and take, the brothers work out a deal to split their nights between the bed and cot. They were going to be thrown away. They were just found. And we took them. We stored them. Not really sure what we were going to do with them. And now we found a, we found a pretty good use for it. And, because of that, this guy will be sleeping on a, on a bed tonight, and I think that's really exciting. 
God has come here and helped us. They feel like heaven is open. And I just want them to share what they have instead to throw it away. To give a boy a place to sleep that he doesn't have to share. To give a family basic health care. It's very rare to see a medical brigade around here, so that's why I came here. I'm really sick, and I'm here to see if there's any solution. All of my bones hurt. We're very thankful. We've been waiting for this for days. We've been able to take supplies, take equipment that would have otherwise been thrown away. That sits in the back halls of hospitals all over the country. Go up a little higher. And we've been able to just scratch the surface of what's available out there, collect it, and bring it to places in need. Okay. And we've been able to really provide first world health care to these people living in a third world who would otherwise often never even see a doctor. During four medical brigades, Medwish supplies are used to help treat more than a thousand people in the mountains of Honduras. People who waited in the rain for a chance to see a doctor, who somehow got to the only surgical clinic in this part of the country. Okay. A clinic modern by Honduran standards, ancient by U.S. standards. Surgeons are repairing the hernia of a young girl. There's a defect that's about uh, two centimeters. Her lower abdomen is made as numb as possible. But without an anesthesiologist, she's forced to stay awake. No, we usually use some sedation. Okay. Pero vas a estar muy bien, okay? This boy may have testicular cancer. Okay. We're really able to do this procedure today in large part based upon the supplies that we brought down, such as suture, gauze, and surgical instruments. So I just explained to the family, the mother and the sister and the brother, uh, that we finished the surgery. He's doing very well and that it did, in fact, look a bit like a tumor. While doctors removed what appears to be a tumor, it's unclear if the family has enough money to pay for a laboratory test in Tegucigalpa. Despite the volunteer surgical help, despite the medical care and supplies sent to the far reaches of this country, the skeptic may wonder how many people are really helped? You see the difference. You see the smile in the kids. You see the kids are getting better. Uh, we, they do follow up at medical brigades. And, and you can tell how the kids have changed, how their health has changed. And, and they're also learning good habits for, for good health. And it's just changing lives. It's, it's making lives better. They feel that they're loved by these people, that these people care for them. And it makes a big difference. It really does. If you cannot get help and not give education, there's no, no way to get out from this poverty or this misery that we live. The only way to fight misery or poverty is by giving help and education, no other way. And maybe, just maybe, with better health and better education, a country can change. That it can happen, one person at a time. This is the story of one little kid. He came to sister when he was 15 days old. And um, he grew up just uh, thousands and thousands of more children in Honduras in the Sister Maria's projects. So this little kid uh, uh, liked to play the piano, so he learned how to play the piano and how to make songs and play the guitar and everything. He even went to uh, Germany to study piano after a few years because he got so good doing that. But after a while he thought of there was like uh, not enough. He wanted to do something else. 
So he got into law school and uh, he became a lawyer. He became a, a, a paramedic too. He came back to Honduras and started work as a paramedic, working with the ambulance, training people, working with medical brigades, working with the groups from, from the United States and from Canada that come here to make uh, medical brigades. This little kid that loves Sister Maria Rosa, that works for her, for her and uh, try to help a lot of people, is me. My name is Kike, and uh, I just want to tell people that uh, with a little help, they can make, uh, just like I did, a big difference in someone's life. Kike says the people who volunteer their time and medical supplies prove that people haven't given up on his country. That people are watching over his country. Because so many need watching over. Mi vida. 